Hey there, in this video we are going to go ahead and take a look at how we um, look at proportions and just what a proportion is. And then next lesson we will get into how we actually solve proportions. So let's start with what a ratio is. So a ratio is going to be helpful in knowing what a proportion is because a proportion is made up of ratios. So a ratio is just a comparison of any two quantities. So a ratio can be written many ways. So one of those ways is as a fraction, so A divided by B. So that might be something like three divided by four. And then we have um, A colon B, which is an, typically said A to B. And so that would be like three to four like this. And then A to B with the word two in between there. So that would be like three to four. And what that means is um, when it's written as a ratio, it's just comparing, uh, for example, we'll talk in a minute about um, recipes. So maybe there are three eggs and four cups of flour or something along those lines. So it's comparing different quantities um, within either a fraction or written as um, a ratio with a colon or with the word two in between. Now, when we have two ratios set equal to each other, it's called a proportion. So for example, A over B equals C over D. So maybe going back to the three fourths that we just used, if I had three fourths equal to six eighths, that would be a proportion that's uh, setting equal to ratios. Three over four is one ratio and six over eight as another ratio. Proportions can be used um, oftentimes for scaling up or scaling down. So for example, I just talked a minute ago about recipes. So if we had, for example, five eggs and three cups of flour, um, the ratio of eggs to flour would be expressed as five over three, five to three. If we were doubling the recipe, we would uh, double the, the top and we would double the bottom of the fraction to determine the new ratio in the double batch. So we would see five thirds and we would multiply by two on top and multiply by two on bottom to get our new ratio of 10 over six. Um, so that would be five over three equals 10 over six. And that would be a proportion that's showing the ratio of eggs to flour here in the single batch is the same equal to the ratio of eggs to flour in the um, doubled version. It's just five and three versus 10 and six. But again, it's just that doubled version. So it is still equivalent. Um, that is what a proportion is. So saying that the ratio is the same within the single and the double batch of the recipe but the numbers obviously do not look identical. Five and 10 are different, three and six are different. So that's what a proportion is. So now we're going to go ahead and compare um, fractions or compare ratios to test a proportion for equality. So what that means is we're going to look at, for example, um, five over three and 10 over six, like we just talked about, and we're going to um, talk about how we actually know if these are equivalent. Now, obviously, we just went through and said, oh, well, I multiplied five by two and I multiplied three by six. So yes, they're equivalent. We, we did that work already, but I'm using this common example that we um, are familiar example that we just went through uh, to make it a little simpler to see what we're actually doing. Um, so two methods here, two options of how you can actually compare these and test for equality. So um, the first way is to simplify each ratio and compare. So five over three, five and three are not divisible by the same number other than one. So five over three is the simplified version. 10 and six are both even, so they can both be divided by two here and here. 10 divided by two is five, six divided by two is three. And then you're asking yourself, are these actually equal once they are each simplified? And yes, they are equal. So that means that um, five over three equals 10 over six is a true proportion, meaning they are actually equivalent. So that's method one. Method two is using the same um, proportion but doing a slightly different method to compare. So in this one, we're going to use what we call the cross products. 
and the cross products will come back when we actually solve, but you can multiply the diagonals here, so three times 10 and six times five, and compare those numbers to see if they are equivalent. So it doesn't matter which diagonal or which cross product you do first. Three times 10 is 30. And then you would put an equal sign in between and then do the other diagonal, the blue one here, five times six, which is also 30. And then again, you're asking yourself, is that a true statement? Is that cross product equal to that cross product? And yes, they are. So that tells us that those original uh, ratios set equal, or in other words, that original proportion five over three is equal to 10 over six. And so that is a true proportion. So either method works. It's sometimes it's easier one way versus the other, uh, depending on the size of the numbers, if they're really big, really small, whatever it may be. So um, you can pick and choose which method works best for you. So just a quick recap, ratios, remember, are um, fractions or A to B written with a colon or A to B written with um, the word two. Proportions are just two ratios set equal, typically as a fraction. So a ratio equals a ratio, meaning, um, for example, A over B equals C over D. That would be a proportion. True proportions, we are going to either just simplify each fraction and compare to see if they are identical, or you can do the cross products where you do A times D and B times C and see if those cross products are equivalent. So that's a summary of what we looked at today. So hopefully that helps a little bit. And then our next video, we'll get into how to actually solve proportions for a missing variable.